We live in a multi-sensory world. Our senses are constantly being stimulated by an integrated assault of sounds, images, sensory impressions of different kinds. We all remember walking down a pier and hearing the water splash around us. Our brain can fill in gaps when sensory information is not present. When we watch a suggestive image, such as this one, that will evoke sounds and other sensory impressions. An example of this connection between senses is the Kiki Bube effect. It was first observed in the early 20th century. Participants were asked which shape is called Kiki and which shape is called Buba. The answer is consistent. The vast majority of respondents associate the rounded shape with Buba and the spiky shape with Kiki. This means that our brain attaches abstract meanings to shapes and sounds in a consistent way. Michel Chion states that there is no sensory given that is isolated from the start. The senses are channels, highways, more than territories or domains. When kinetic sensations organized into art are transmitted through a single sensory channel, they can convey all other senses via that channel. Chion exemplifies this with inherent visuality of musique concrète and the implied sound behind silent movies. The rise of radio and TV and the escalation of the mechanical reproduction of media in the 20th century changed how media was consumed. For example, music partly became a commodity, often dissociated from performance, which is highly visual. This has led to a multi-sensory gap. Packaging and music videos, for example, have partly compensated for that, but the gap remains. Different waves of digitization have further affected how we consume media in the 21st century. For example, streaming audio grew by one-third in the first half of 2019. The portability of our digital devices and the social context in which we interact with them have inhibited the use of sound, furthering the multisensory gap. Digital technologies are distancing us from the richness of real-world experiences. And they are limiting how media can convey them. How will our digital future look like if this multisensory gap continues? How will we evolve? Will we become sensorially desensitized? Babies and young children sense their environment as a blend of light, sound, smell, and other impressions. Education, however, has created sensory silos. We are taught that visual design and sound design are very different fields, often taught in different departments or faculties. When sound design and visual design are combined, often there is a lack of careful look at the correspondences between them. How can we invert this trend, bring more sensoriality to design and to digital experiences. I have been working with audiovisual art and design for 15 years. I'd like to show you a video of one of my projects called AV Clash from 2010. AV Clash is a net art project. You can uh, check it online at avclash.com. AV Clash visualizes uh, one of the largest sound databases in the world called freesound.org. But instead of navigating that database as image and static audio uh, uh, images, you uh, navigate a series of four interactive audiovisual objects that you can manipulate. And they will create animations for you based on the sounds that they visualize.
I believe there are two main fields that lead the way in exploring the reintegration of senses in digital experiences. One is audiovisual performance. Audiovisual performances are electronic music concerts, usually, where artists are generating visuals tightly connected with music, creating integrated audiovisual experiences. In the image, you can see my latest uh, project for audiovisual performance called AV Zones. Another important field is video games. The games industry has an increased awareness regarding the importance of multisensory experience and how it contributes to engagement and immersion. In this image, you can see an audiovisual memory game I have developed called Shape Tones, inspired by Kiki Buba. Accessibility also benefits from a multi-sensory design approach. Persons with impairment in one sense would benefit if related information is conveyed through another sense. Multi-sensory design brings specific challenges. How to match and map sensory modalities, how much space to leave for interpretation. For this reason, we need audiovisual design and multi-sensory approaches taught in schools and at universities. We also need to bring awareness regarding multisensory user experience to the design community. We are immersed in digital technologies, and this is distancing us from how we experience the world. A multisensory approach to design can help create digital experiences that are more meaningful, accessible, engaging, and human. Thank you.